ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey, right here on Wabash Catch TV. Uh, do appreciate you tuning in here on this beautiful Wednesday, July 21st. Look who's here. It's Kevin Green. He is the head football coach of the Salem Wildcats. Have you been there over 10 years now, or like 15 or something? Eh? Oh. Yeah, it's over 10. I got to think about it here. It's 11, well, 11 was my first, so yeah, <laughs> I got to think about that math. It's a little you difficult. think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, with last year, it's kind of difficult to figure out the math. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think this is 11. This uh, this is 11, 11 and a half. He's been, he's been there a long time. Right. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk to Kevin about Salem and what they've, uh, what they've done this summer, what they did last spring, uh, what they did last fall, and what they have coming up this fall here on uh, our Big Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you're watching us here on Channel 3 or Channel 99 over in Salem and here in uh, Flora on Channel 100 or Channel 25. Same story up in Effingham, uh, Farina, uh, all over the place. And we do appreciate you uh, tuning in today. Let's tell you a little bit about what is going on in the community today. A few community events uh, today here on uh, July 20th. 21st. This one I'm going to attend. The uh, Red Cross down in Fairfield holding a blood drive at the Community of Christ Church. And uh, that will be from 11.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The drive is their summer donorama. Now you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. They will serve pork burgers. For free, you get it's a three dollar pork burger. For crying out loud, go donate blood and uh, get your pork burger. That'll be fun. Door prize is going to also be awarded down there at the uh, Community of Christ Church. You can schedule your your appointment online. Schedule your donation appointment online. That's probably the best way to do it. Go to redcrossblood.org. That's redcrossblood.org. And then you can uh, schedule your appointment. I think I'm late in the afternoon. I can't remember. I'll have to take a look. Uh, or you can give uh, Diane a call at 838-9873, and she'll put your appointment in. All blood types are needed. Uh, I always ask people uh, if they donate blood. Do you? Are you a blood donor? I am not. No, oh, that's, I'm I mean, not. I'm not, not going to say things like that. No, it's, it's, it's a personal phobia that I have. And, Needles? Uh, uh, very much so. Is yeah, that very right? much so. Yeah, my wife is an avid donor, though she donates every time, so she well, makes see, up for both of us. That's that's kind of how I do it for my wife. There you go. I, she there you does, go. She's the same way. She exactly. doesn't like needles. It's a, it's a team thing. You got to have some teamwork. So. That's exactly right. <laughs> I like your thinking. I like your thinking. Uh, what else is going on today over in Centralia? Today they're going to have a, a full day long gun safety class. Uh, the class is limited to only fifty attendees, and you must register ahead. So register. Today starts at 10 o'clock, but you can give them a call now still at 532-9551. The class is required now to get your hunting license. If you want a hunting license, you need to have this class. Uh, eight kids age 10 or younger must be accompanied by a parent or guardian, and they will serve a light lunch. Again, that is over at the uh, 1826 South Pine Street in Centralia. Again, safety class. Also uh, in Centralia at Fairview. View Park today at 4.30, 4.30 to 6 o'clock tonight at, at uh, Fairview Park. They're going to have a Parenting with a Purpose class. This asks the if you are looking for an activity to do with your child, or do you have a plan for one, come and enjoy their picnic in the park with organized games for kids, food, and uh, fellowship, all kinds of fun stuff. Parenting with a purpose there in Centralia. Up at the uh, Ballard Nature Center in Altamont uh, at 10 a.m. this morning. Actually, if you're depending on where you are, you might need to get on the road pretty soon. Uh, they will have a story time, story time day. It's a story featuring an owl and a woodpecker. This is Hoot and Peck at the Ballard Nature Center. And then activities to learn more about them. Bring a blanket so you can sit on the grass for story time. Just going to be gorgeous weather today for that. So uh, give them a uh, give, give them a. Uh, try enjoy that uh, later on this evening in effingham at the uh, village wine and gifts this is open microphone night uh, bill usually does this about every wednesday it's bill Poss and the gang they'll have a, a a night of great live music 
uh, will be at Village Wine and Gifts. Bill hosts a lineup of the region's best singers and songwriters, and I suspect, folks, if you're interested in playing yourself, uh, by all means, show up with your guitar or your tuba or whatever. Now, if you were going to play, a, if you were a singer-songwriter, what instrument would you be playing? Uh, probably a guitar. Do you play a guitar? Yeah, I do not. Oh, no. No, but I'd love to. I'd love to be able to. You know you're not too old to uh, learn. I I. I I, I know. I, I've got a few other. I think I would. I think it would take a little bit of time and dedication that I don't have right you now. You probably but, don't have. I, but I bet you. I would like to learn though. I, I bet you haven't had too much time in the last six months. No, it's been pretty busy. But, uh, <laughs> no. I if bet. I had some leisure time though, playing the guitar or learning how, I would definitely. Try. See now that makes a ton of sense. Right. That makes a ton of sense. What else going on today here on July twenty first? Well, it ha so happens that this is National Junk Food Day. Every day is National Junk Food Day in my book. That's not true. This day is dedicated to the foods that everyone loves to snack on. Junk foods are, by definition, usually high in fats, in fats, pardon me, sugar, salt, calories, and contain very little nutritional value. I, now, I don't eat that much junk food. Would uh, do would. I, I, I have picked up the habit lately. Uh, I, I got to ask, you're, see, you're a professional. You're a <laughs> professional physical trainer of, uh, of young men and women. Are peanuts good for me? It, there's good fats in peanuts, yeah. You, just in moderation. In moderation. Just like anything that has good, good fats, you know, you don't want to go overboard with it. But, yeah, in moderation, they're okay. Okay. Well, I say, I, I mean, I'll get, uh, I'll probably eat, uh, uh, let's see, I, I bought a two-pound package of peanuts at, at one of the stores the other day, and it's taken me about four weeks to get through. I'd say that's in moderation. That's moderation. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I'm doing great. There you go. Now, now I'm not going to ask you about the pizza I eat. I, well, pizzas, I love pizza. <laughs> you know, if, you're, if you're getting ready to do any type of activity the next day, pizza is a great uh, you know, pre-game or pre-event nice yeah, pre uh, meal there you go. for sure. Absolutely. Like I said, it's National Junk Food Day. From the frozen food aisle to the fast food chain, a myriad of choices for consumers have flooded the market. By the 1970s, junk foods earned that name, and it is a bad name too. Michael Jacobson, a microbiologist, is crazy. Credited with coining the phrase junk food. He also set out to curb our appetite for high sugar, high salt, high preservative foods. I don't know how well he's done. Uh, how do you, so how to observe it? I'll just snack a little bit. Don't snack a ton. Just snack a little bit. And, you know, if you, if you feel like eating a carrot instead of eating that popsicle, that's probably good, too. <laughs> that's probably good, too. Speaking of junk food, uh, July 21st is also National Hot Dog Day. National Hot Dog Day. I always thought it was July 4th, but uh, July 21st celebrates the summertime state on a bun enjoy a piping hot hot dog add some relish maybe some mustard one thing you want to know is it a sandwich or not well i don't know would you call would you call a hot dog a sandwich no i, would, I think it's its own it's in its own category wouldn't it, it be? i mean i would think so yeah yeah, yeah I, I would think so uh, national hot dog day is uh, how, how can you observe hot national hot dog day folks well host a weenie roast share your favorite toppings uh, find out to take a poll find out what's most preferred blackened hot dogs are just cooked through explore the best hot dog eateries and give them a shout out i bet you have been to one of my favorites which is the Wiener Circle. I have not. You've not been to the Wiener Circle in no. uh, Lincoln Park. It's oh in, no, in Chicago. Uh, no, I have not been to that one. They no. have char grilled dogs. Okay, that are just astonishing. Well, the next time I go, I'll have to keep get that a, on. The, get a cheddar cheese dog. Okay, but don't be sure. bothered, uh, Kevin. By the way, the. Uh, uh, the the hosts and the the it's it's a stand basically okay. but, but but you go in it and these people are ruder than they could be to you <laughs> it's it's one of those type of things where they just they're just assassin you all right, the time right and, and I some people go for that me I just order my dog sit back and shut up and watch them make fun of other people sure sure <laughs> but, I'll have to check that out for sure yeah, the Wiener Circle up in uh, Lincoln Park in in Chicago that's the way to go uh, the National Hot Dogs 
day was formed by the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council. They established this back in 1991, 30 years ago, to coincide with, coincide with a hot dog lunch on Capitol Hill. This observance occurs every year on, I believe, the third Wednesday in July. I believe that's what the day is. Yeah. Uh, what's on Wabash, folks? What do you want to see on TV? Well, uh, Major League Baseball this afternoon. It's the Padres at the Braves. Actually, this morning, starting at 11.20. That'll be on the MLB Network. Chris Paddock versus Charlie Borden. Uh, 2.40 today. Pittsburgh is at Arizona. Chad Cool versus Madison Bumgarner. And that's on Channel 599. Uh, back to uh, the White Sox. Minnesota Twins at the White Sox. Michael Pineda versus Dylan Cease. NBC Sports Chicago. Channel 6.43. Cardinals are at the Cubs tonight. Pardon me. Cubs are at the Cardinals tonight. They finish. They can continue their series. Uh, it's a four-game series. This will be on ESPN, so you don't have to uh, listen to Ricky Horton uh, if you don't want to. Thank heavens. That's my thought. Uh, Chicago Cubs at St. Louis Cardinals. Kyle Hendricks versus Adam Wainwright. And then the Giants. Uh, that's the ESPN Channel 601. And the Giants will be back on uh, Major League Baseball Network Channel 599, taking on the Dodgers tonight at 910. Logan Webb versus Julio Arias on MLB Network. And did, can you believe it? Can you believe it? The Olympics are starting. Finally. 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 A year late. The Olympics are getting underway. It's uh, softball today on NBC Sports Network. Uh, U.S. versus Italy at 3 o'clock. U.S. versus Sweden in soccer at 5 o'clock. This is on Channel 216. Uh, at 7 o'clock, live softball. It'll be tomorrow in Tokyo where they're playing, but they're playing tonight on uh, on NBC Sports uh, Network, Channel 216, U.S. versus Canada. And then at 10 o'clock, Japan versus Mexico in softball as well. That is Kevin Green. He is the head coach of the uh, Salem High School uh, Wildcats. I'm Bruce Dickey. We'll be right back on Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right after this word. Stick around. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to LeMond Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. LeMond's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Clay City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies, where the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our power brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basementy experts. It is all things new at Zimdar's Heating, Air Conditioning, and Appliance Repair. We have a new line of heating and cooling equipment and new technicians. Our new equipment line offers 24 months free financing and excellent warranty coverage. Our experienced service technicians can provide you with quality service and repairs on all brands of HVAC equipment. Zimdar's has been serving Clay County and the surrounding areas for over 23 years. The employees of Zimdar's are here to help, so call local and call Zimdar's.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to uh, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. Uh, head coach Kevin Green is here of the Salem uh, Football Wildcats. By the way, congratulations are in order, I understand. You don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not yet, but I'll take, <laughs> I'll take whatever you're going to offer, let me tell you. Uh, I see that Salem has a, a entirely brand new... Uh, uh, logos and stuff. Have you yeah, seen that? Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, we're we're using them on our camp shirts and helmet decals and that. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, some effort was put in by our administration this past spring, I guess, to kind of create something a little bit different. And um, they look pretty good. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, I think it's you know, there's been some uh, you know, there's there's obviously going to be an array of opinions about it, but sure. uh, you know. Uh, anything new is always going to be met with a little bit of resistance. Yeah. Um, and I personally, <clears throat> you know, I think it looks, I think it looks good. So I I'll, we'll use what, it. I got to ask the question. Does that mean that we get all new jerseys and everybody's good? Well, I think eventually is the new <laughs> uniform. Yeah, no, right. Yeah. Let's, let's get everything new right now. Yeah. I think as everything new kind of revolves around, uh, you know, on a yearly basis, they'll want to use it, you know, obviously, but. I'm guessing probably though that it does mean I'm guessing a new helmet decal. Yeah, we had to order those, got them in, and uh, yeah, they look sharp. Do they so, look pretty good? Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's cool. That's that's fun. Now, you you gotta congratulate uh, folks for for new uh, stuff. Yeah, for sure. And it's it, you know what? And honestly, as a coach, it gives us that foundation what we can use for logos and things like that because you know finding t-shirt designs and and that kind of thing at least that takes that part out of it for us because it can be you know every year you're trying to find a different design and that kind of thing and how do you um, how do you come up uh, every year also coaches uh football coaches and in in especially football coaches but you'll see it in other sports as well mm -hmm. like to come up with a a tagline Mm -hmm. basically or a motto yeah. for that season sure uh what do you have one yet for 2021-22 yeah our our, lo our logo or our uh our motto this year is is uh is a hashtag is hashtag be the thermostat be uh, the thermostat so is the the be the one that that sets the uh sets the temperature of what Set we're the doing tone, right setting the tone exactly and and thermostat there's a there's a you know a little thing for each letter within the word thermostat so toughness and speed and things like that so oh, really? teammate and that kind of stuff yeah no so, kidding yeah. so that's um, a lot of yeah, that's a lot of letters you got to fill it with, is Kevin. it is yeah we had uh, it was it was a collective effort yeah, it's never just one person that comes up that with was it. my that was my next question yeah. how do you come up with those every year yeah because, i mean do you, do you just recklessly steal them from other coaches that you see or yes <laughs> so, sometimes yeah i mean it's you know it, it's no different than than a play that you run or or teaching in the classroom sure. different lessons you you come up with ideas that are brought to you typically by other people who oh, come yeah. up with them first and and you find things that work for you and um so yeah i mean the last few years the ones that we've used we've gotten from other people and things that they've used with their programs and that f kind of fit where we were at with our program at that time yeah. and um so yeah i mean we kind of came up with this one and had something and we've never done anything where you know the letters of what we're using have a meaning to them so yeah. thought that would be a little bit different and and uh, so yeah that's what we're doing well, that's, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool that's um, cool uh, the okay, I've got to ask you this. I asked I had Coach uh, Brian Tackett sure. on uh, yesterday from Flora. They made the playoffs uh, first time in a while a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and then last year they were hoping for a return, of course. And then you lose the season, right. lose the ability to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The kids. I asked him if the kids, if it, if the if the kids minded. Well, let's see how to put this. If the kids were bothered by the disappointment of losing the chance at the playoffs, or they were just happy enough to be able to play again whenever they found out they could play again in March of this year, I think the answer to, to that is yes for both of them. For both, of them. yeah. I mean, I think um, you know our kids in our situation, um, we didn't play Centralia, which is always a big game for our kids as a cross county rival, um, but we picked up Mount Vernon, who was a pretty good local rival for our our kids, and our conference has a lot of good rivalries. So I think that made up for the lack of playoffs a little bit. But um, there was definitely, as we got to the middle part of the season, weeks three, four, and five, you know, there was that 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 finality. 
to yeah. it that was coming up and the kids knew it and um, well, especially the seniors i would think absolutely yeah, absolutely like that, yeah, yeah when you're in the hunt um nobody thinks about that yeah you know in the last couple of years we've been fortunate to have been in that situation and um you know it's it's a different attitude around your team there's so much focus on just that individual week nobody's thinking about what's going to happen down the road because you know that there's opportunities that are going to come as long as you keep taking care of business and this past spring it was one of those things where you know when we got to week five that was it we knew week six was going to be you know that was our last week together and that was you know i think it did affect our seniors some and it affected everybody obviously how <laughs> difficult was it uh to keep the uh keep focus on uh, for, for the team like during the several months that they that they, they were basically in limbo didn't know what the, what was going to happen right it was it was a challenge and i'm sure it was a challenge for everybody and i think you know the hardest part was going through the fall getting some contact days in the fall but knowing we may not play in yeah. the spring you know and that's the thing that you started, yeah. when you started the cut in september basically mm -hmm. you started the contact days right they give you contact days makes you think you know we might play a few games in october right that was my mindset yeah and i think that was what we all kind of hoped in yeah. the back of our minds but also knew that there was going to be a good chance that wasn't going to happen um but november and december were probably the hardest just because you know we we, we continued to try to do some speed training workouts and stuff like that but you know it's just it was just a really tough situation and it was tough on our kids not being able to be in the building all the time and um you know just just really glad it's in the rearview mirror how were they able how were they were the i mean the kids probably wanted to lift they they probably wanted yeah. to come in and you probably just had to limit personnel or something like that well we, we 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 have weight training class during the school day so they were okay. able to get so you know quite a bit of that done during the school day in their pe classes um and you know jim's by us you know in salem i think they were open uh for the most part so they were able to kind of do some stuff on their own too um but uh, but yeah getting through that the, the the holiday period of time was was a real struggle it was tough for everybody and you know once we got into january it seemed like things started rolling really fast well once th that, that was the tricky part of january last mm -hmm. year you still didn't know no. middle of the month or late right. until until like you, the you last were, week you were hearing rumors this might happen it might not happen and you know how much credence do you give to that stuff it was really hard to say how do you tell the kids you tell the kids don't pay attention to what you're hearing just wait till we tell you stuff is that what you is that how you would deal with it you know honestly we didn't really we didn't really deal with it that much i mean we continued to do our speed training in january just keep once. your head down to work weren't you just kept yeah and, and that's hard you know we just kept our blinders on and kept doing what we were trying to do and honestly it got to a point and i'm sure most coaches are like this it got to a point where we felt like we had to continue to do stuff whether we were going to play or not right because the kids needed stuff to do yeah you know, I, that's the to thing. continue to send kids home after school school or whatever your school schedule would have been to continue to send the kids home after school many of them weren't working because they didn't have jobs um it wasn't healthy for them it put them in situations where they were potentially going to be hanging out with kids that they maybe shouldn't have been hanging out right. with and from a mental standpoint it wasn't healthy for them yeah and so we felt like there was an obligation to not just help them continue to improve as athletes but help their mental part of you know getting through because let's be honest the winter months can be hard in a normal year for some people right and then when you have what was going on last year it was uh it, you know it, it, there was a, a sense of responsibility there to con continue to provide something for the kids to do well i tell you what it's just uh i congratulations on getting through without losing any more hair right yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. it wasn't much to start with so yeah for sure <laughs> you're watching big talk first thing you here on wabash catch tv here with coach kevin green back in a sec stick around does your home show signs of foundation problems call the experts at woods basement systems our power brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home call woods basement systems today woods the all things basementy experts mold rank air pests all getting closer to inside your home with a dirt crawl space there's no telling what's below you a sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out plus can lower your utility bills woods the all things basementy experts 
Shy Diesel Service Company is your anything diesel full service center and fuel injection shop. Shy Diesel offers the quickest turnaround times to get you back on the road. Shy Diesel can service any diesel engine from agricultural, construction, heavy duty truck, and automotive. Let Shy rebuild your pump, injectors, or turbos. Need custom fuel lines? Shy has you covered with a drive in service. They offer a variety of services, including oil changes, engine rebuilds, DOT inspections, and DPF cleanings. For unmatched quality, think Shy Diesel Service Company. Anything diesel. Oh, hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at D at wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state of the art tire and alignment technology. Le Mans always inspects your battery, antifreeze wipers and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMansOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get ahead of the game at Carter Athletic Academy, where the goal is to transform you into the best young athlete you can be. Train for top performance in football, volleyball, soccer, baseball, and softball. Professional private lessons and clinics are always available with Carter Athletic Academy's expert training staff. Carter's exclusive hit track system brings skill development as well as exciting gameplay to batting cages. Plus, the Academy is the perfect spot for your special event or celebration. The Carter Athletic Academy in Fairfield. Hey folks, welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dick here on Wabash Catch TV. Kevin Green is here. Uh, with uh, He's the high school coach, uh, the head football coach for Salem uh, High School, Salem Community High School. And uh, we're talking about uh, this upcoming season. But before we get to this upcoming season, let's talk, talk a little bit about last season. You lost some pretty good athletes uh, you, that you're going to have to refill some spots, aren't you? Yeah, especially you know on the offensive side. We've had uh, some pretty good offensive skill players the last few years so um you know keaton mitchell obviously is a, is right at the forefront of that group he's a big part of our team for the last two years so uh to see him graduate and uh you know is is a big chunk of our offense so uh we're gonna have to find ways to replace him and you know three-year starter at tight end and trent bowles right. another guy we got to replace um donovan williams wide receiver we got to replace so you know um, and that's the the tricky part especially for the tight end and the wide receiver part is those guys did a lot of blocking as mm -hmm. well that, yep. that you're gonna have to to get you're basically replugging somebody else who may not have done that kind of thing, right? And you know, I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is when you're at those skill spots, they think about what they do when they have the ball. Yeah, there's a lot of plays that they don't have the ball. Yeah, and more. they're doing other things exactly yeah. where you know those things are critical to a team's success. And um, like you said, those guys are all really good at when they got the ball, and they were pretty good when they didn't get the ball yeah. too. So um, some big pieces to, to replace there, no doubt. Did you get any uh, kids uh, that are advancing to play college football? I mean, that must – that must uh, as a coach – of course, your 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 main imperative uh, thought is to is to educate the kids, both you know character as well as uh, as able to as, as physically, but getting somebody to advance and in, in, and play college ball must be also a, a boost too. It is, it is, and I think honestly, the kids, younger kids, see that and they like. You know that that draws kids to your program right. when they see that kind of stuff. And we've been blessed the last few years uh, to have had several kids move on to the next level. But last year, um, yeah, Keaton and Trent are both going to go to Illinois College and play, and um, they'll join Leighton Ware, who's there now, and Caden, his older brother, are there. So we have four kids playing at Illinois College, um, and then uh, Julian Huggins, who was a three-year starter on the offensive line for us, is playing at Knox College this okay. uh, uh, this coming fall. So um, yeah, we've had we've had multiple kids the last few years uh, signed to go play at the next level, and that's that's you know 
that's fun. It's fun to see that, and it's, you know they, that's well, their goal. The kids, absolutely right, absolutely right. They put a lot of time in, and they want to continue their careers, uh, even if it's just for a few more years. Yeah. And and um, you know I love that about them. Well, that's the other thing, though. Also, and it probably gives you pride as a coach. They're going in they're, if they're playing college football. They probably. There's a pretty good chance they're going to go into teaching and coaching. Yeah, I think you know, a lot of the colleges that these kids would go to, or you know, education is a big right. one there. And I, you know, like I said, we've we've been very fortunate the last few years to have had a lot of kids that love the game, and I think would would be excellent coaches if they chose to go that direction. When you mention, uh, coach, that uh, uh, you think that the kids going to college might make your program a little bit more attractive, it kind of has uh, manifested itself in your numbers, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it has. I mean, we've got, you know, like we were talking earlier, we've got at least 75 kids right now that will play this year for us, um, 30 to 31 freshmen, which is a great, wow. you know, that's a good situation to be in. Above, um, yeah, I mean, do you play? For, do you have freshman games scheduled all? Well, that, that's what I was – that was actually my next comment. I think that's, that's the only challenge to having all those kids yeah. is – there's a lot of programs in our area that are not as fortunate as we are right now to have the numbers that we do. So finding teams to play that have three levels of football, that varsity level, the JV level, and then a freshman-only level um, can be challenging. Um, but there are some teams that, that we're able to find, and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get five to six games for those freshmen only by themselves, which is really nice. So. That's that's kind of typical six seven games of a it freshman is. season. Yeah, I mean, I think typically our lower levels will play eight. Um, so we'll have a couple games that we won't be able to fill for those kids. But um, our athletic director, Coach Stewart, does a great job, and and he helps me, you know, whenever we need to try and find gaps in those lower class schedules because, you know, those kids need to play in order to get the experience to make them quality varsity players. Well, that's so, exactly right. Um, well, it's important. Got- if you've got 30 kids in the freshman class, how many kids do you have in the sophomore? Sophomore class, we're right at about 22, 23, somewhere So in you've there. got over 50 kids in your lower mm-hmm. levels. Yeah. You, that's That's got to be – that's got to put a smile on your face when you think about not just this year but the next few. It, it does. And I think, you know, you try not to look too far down the road. Yeah. Um, you want to take, take care of your kids. You're, they're going now. Right. Yeah. And any time you have kids that want to participate in your program um, – that's a great thing, and we're we're glad we're you know we're glad to have every one of them, and um, you know as as we mentioned earlier, it's it, it is cyclical. We won't be in this situation all the time. You know we're 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 just uh, we're living where our feet are at, and and we we love the numbers that we've got right now, and we're fortunate to have them. I tell you what, let's do. We're gonna take a quick break, and then and what we'll do, we're gonna come back talk about this year's teams because he does have some pretty good athletes coming back, and uh, we'll do that here after this word. You're watching a Big Talk with Bruce Dick. Kevin Green is here, Salem football coach, back in a sec. Stick around. Having car trouble, need a tow, or just some routine maintenance? Butcher Automotive in Louisville has you covered. Locally owned and operated, Butcher Automotive offers complete vehicle repair services along with tire sales and wheel alignment. They're your local hand-cooked tire and interstate battery dealer. Butcher Automotive offers free local pickup and delivery so your car can be repaired while you're at work or at home. Butcher strives to treat everyone's vehicle as their own. At Butcher Automotive, they don't want you to give them your business. They want to earn it. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our Power Brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basement experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basement experts. Residents of the Clay County and surrounding area have relied on Clay County State Bank for sound professional service for over 100 years. With convenient lobby and drive-up hours, we are ready to serve you Monday through Saturday. We appreciate all who bank with us, and we look forward to the opportunity of working with anyone who is looking for a community bank to help with their financial needs. Give us a call at 665-3314, visit us online, or stop by and see us on the square in Louisville to experience our friendly personal service. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont, Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. 
Le Mans always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMansOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. North Wayne Insurance Agency in Flora is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Hey folks, welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV, uh, talking with uh, Kevin Green. He is the head coach of the uh, Salem Wildcats, and uh, we're talking about all kinds of different stuff. Hey, before we get to talking about the, the roster for this season, uh, if folks want to follow um, you folks on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, what do they need to look for? Uh, we don't have an Instagram or Facebook page, but okay. we do have a Twitter page. It's uh, I believe it's at SCHS Wildcat FB. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and we, we – we don't put a ton of stuff up there in the off season, but uh, once the season gets rolling, we'll put quite a bit on. Yeah, Twitter you'll put some and, pictures and yeah, stuff for on sure. there. It yep. looks good. So yep. yeah, yep. go to SCHS uh, Wildcats uh, dot com. Well, at SCHS yeah. Wildcat Football. Right? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Is that right? Exactly okay. right. Yep. I follow it. I just hit the button. I don't know go. what I'm. <laughs> I don't know That's what I right. did. Uh, last year, team went three and three. Uh, they lost some some pretty important parts, but got some pretty important parts coming back here. Yeah, we do. I think you know. Offensively, we're going to be pretty young at, at quite a few spots, but um, you know we do have two veteran skill kids. Uh, Caden B been a starter for four years; it'll be his fourth year for us. Um, just an electrifying player, yeah. you know, just a young man that uh, great in our hallways, uh, three sport kid, yeah. and um, just you know, just been a real pleasure to coach him, and, and looking forward to having another season with him. Um, he does a lot of things for us, though. He'll play plays wide out, he plays safety. Um, you know, we're going to try and move him around a little bit more this year and get him the ball in some different ways. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, he's a, he's a big part of our offense, a big part of our team. And um, he's Bray- one of those Caden's uh, Caden's one of those kids that. The opposite kickers will usually kick to the other side. On he bit. is, yeah, I, I the, yeah. There, he's he's a you know, he's a kid that can can take the ball and 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 score every time he touches it. Right. You know, and and he's worked really hard in the weight room. He's put on some size and and he still is able to run a four five forty. You know, which wow. is a which is a you that's know, really fast. That's really fast, right? That's really fast. So, um, and then we have Braden Smith who will be in the backfield and he'll be a wide out a little bit too. Um, this will be his third year starting for us and uh, he's going to take over a little bit bigger role offensively. It was really it was really fun last year to mm-hmm. watch Braden Smith as as the season went on. Mm-hmm. He became a part. He he, he was basically. Basically, the uh, yin and the yang with Keaton Mitchell. He was, and, and they and you'd give the ball. Keaton Mitchell just would soften up a defense, and then mm-hmm. Braden Smith come see you later. That right. kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that's you know we've been fortunate the last couple of years to have had kind of that two headed monster in the backfield. You know, right. a couple of years ago we had Cole Graham and Keaton, and last year we had Braden and Keaton, and um, Braden will kind of take over that main role this year. We've got a, another senior, Bryson Quinn, who will take some carries from Braden to get get him breaks. But um, you know, I think in this day and age of football. It's gotten to be so physical. You've got to have you kind of multiple that. guys yeah. that can run the ball for you. Um, the days of having that one guy in the backfield that you can hand it to twenty five or thirty times, um, you know, I just think those days are over. You know, and, and make it a whole nine game season. It's just it's really hard. So it's nice to have multiple weapons. There. It's it's that's something that you folks probably don't even <laughs> think about in the difference for high school football in twenty. 22, right. 2021 versus high school football when you played or when sure. I played back in the 1980s. We had a kid who would just, you know, he would just right. hit run the ball 30 mm-hmm. times and, and get three <laughs> yards of a, a crack, yep. and, and he might end up with 100 yards 
or something. Right. Whereas now, with the physicality, if you can get you're you're, you're trying to get kids outside more, <clears throat> maybe to get a few more yards. It's on. a little bit more of a finesse game, you know. Yeah. I think a little bit, and and you know, there's so many teams that are trying to you know run the spread concepts and things like that. But um, like you know, it is just between the off season training, uh, I think is a big part of it. But the game has just it is it's a more physical game right now. And uh, to ask a kid who's also going to probably have to play some defense for you right. um, to carry it 25 to 30 times is an awfully tall task. It's a, it's a tough uh, yeah. tough ask, that's for sure. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, the the line, what do you have mm-hmm. coming back in the line? We've got a couple linemen back, uh, actually really three back. Uh, Brett Pater will, will continue to play center for us. He did a pretty nice job for us last year. He's a he's a four-year player in our program. Yeah. A great, great, does a great job. Uh, and then we have Devin and, and Blaine Phillips, who are cousins. Uh, they both anchored the tackle spots for us last year and did a really good job. Um, so we're really excited to have those guys back and um, you know we'll inject some new some younger kids into the skill positions I think that are also going to be able to, to do some things for us. Trevace Mays uh, is just as fast as Caden um, and like you know just is part of that uh, portion of our team that has great, you know, provides some really good team speed for us. Tell me a little bit about. Uh, I'm, I, I ask about the line for two questions. Mm-hmm. One, of course, I am. A, I was a former lineman, uh, so the center is clearly the smartest player on the field. Yeah, our center does a lot of communication <laughs> for us. Yeah, I mean, you have to be. Brett's, a, you know, our last few centers have been pretty good kids, yeah. pretty smart kids, yeah. and uh, and Brett fits that bill for sure. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> making sure that it's uh, clear. Everybody knows that you. Yeah, that was the position you filled. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. right. Yeah, uh, and, but the, your tackles. You, you. Uh, this, this, this brings me to the. To you mentioned to me off there a second ago that mm-hmm. you've got linemen that are running. You got linemen. Uh, they've been in their speed program for a while. Sure, sure. They're running less than five, five point five forties. Right. Yeah, we have we have several of them. Some of those. Yeah, uh, Blaine is uh, Blaine is, and Devin is right there. Yeah, and um, you know we have several kids that, that it are makes a, it interior makes, guys that can. It makes a whale of a difference, doesn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Whenever you've got linemen that have some speed versus linemen that you know, may not be quite as fast as others. Right. You know, in our in our offense, you know, we pull guys quite a bit, and when you can pull guys that are moving like that. Um, the reaction time that the defense has to to react to the type of play you're running is is quite a bit shorter. Yeah. Um, and, and and that's a huge advantage when you have kids up front that can move. Uh, on the defensive side of the football, uh, you've you've Salem over the years has always uh, counted on linebackers that mm-hmm. that go and find and make the tackle. And, right. and, and you still have that coming back, right? Yeah, we do. We've got uh, Caleb Smith actually started at our middle linebacker position last year as a freshman, and yeah. uh, so he's back this year. Um, he's had a really good summer so far. Caden uh, Harris will be a, a returning starter as a, as a senior. He was a starter for us as a junior, and then Braden Smith will take over uh, at that outside linebacker oh, spot. No kidding. So, yeah, we've got um, you know, all three of those kids are, are significantly under the five second 40 range um so the idea that that having those kids there that can run and then you back them up with Caden b at safety and and jake kanky who's also a a very fast kid at the other safety um you know those back five interior guys defensively we're really excited about which brings which leaves us with a defensive line and uh, the defensive line it has kind of become. You mentioned it with running backs, and then the, the need for committees, right? Basically, with running backs, it's kind of become that way a little bit with defensive line. You're going to have uh, people in and out, aren't you? We will a little bit, um, but I will tell you, we've you know uh, we've got Micah Slater back, who is a, 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 a senior for us this year. We've got some influx of juniors uh, who are going to be able to play there as well. Gay Jennings, Casey Sullins. Um, we made a commitment. Uh, as a team and a program probably three years ago uh, that we were going to do everything that we possibly could to not have linemen going both ways. Right. Um, And I think that's been a real big dividend for us, especially in close games in the second half. Um, To not have guys that are required to play both sides of the ball in the trenches um, has been a real big deal for us. Contact every Every play. play. Every play. There's no plays off for those guys. And um, the idea of being able to get those guys on the sideline and talk to them, give them a chance to catch their breath, um, it's been a big deal for us. And we've really kind of held on to that commitment this summer. And – you know, we're not quite as deep up front as what we have been the last couple of years, but we're I think we're going to be able to get things started at least with a lot of those guys going one way. That's also kind of the um, – that's about the three years ago is about when you um – 
changed philosophies and practice the the yeah. no wind sprint philosophy mm -hmm. how how has that affected uh, in the speed training philosophy as opposed right. to other how has that affected your your team speed in the lines well, i think it's been a huge deal because i think most of the time you know your skill kids okay they're going to run track so yeah. they're going to get that speed training um for the most part your big guys up front were always just the guys that were seen as you need to be in the weight room yeah and we lift don't get me wrong um but we don't chase infinite strength in the weight room with what we do and a lot of it is how fast and efficiently they're moving and then when you translate that to what we do in the off season on the track with our big guys um it's really been it's been a it's been a huge benefit for us and um you know i think our kids have seen that too have you noticed when we talked about this last year or three years ago, when the first time you were on the show, I, 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 you probably saw me react. You're doing what? You're not doing wind sprints and right, practices, right? Have you seen? Uh, and it's been it has been a little bit unique to Salem for for three years now. Have you seen any other schools beginning to emphasize that that part of their training? Yeah, I think some are. Um, I know Coach Music uh, over at Olney. They 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 do a lot of similar things to how we you know what we do and, and vice versa we've gotten some ideas from them as well um but you know i think it's just it's what works for your program yeah you know i mean we're, we're really not the be all end all and you know there's a lot of programs out there that win an awful lot of games doing what they've done and yeah. and i don't begrudge them that by any sure. means and you know as i mentioned three years ago we were at a point where we were struggling to get kids out we were struggling to win consistently and we needed a new philosophy and we needed you know we needed we needed to make some changes and so we said what have we got to lose we're going to give it a shot and that's it's been good to us that's exactly right it, it, a lot of times i bet you 80 or 90 percent of the coaches in 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 high school as well as college and professional they they're not willing to try new ideas because they got to the points they are where they are doing what they always did right and i think you know and i and i would tell anybody that asks us about it you know I, my first question would be do you have kids wanting to play in your program if the answer is yes my second question is are you having success if the other answer is yes then don't change yeah don't change what you're doing if you're having success and your kids are, are coming out. We were at a position, like I said, where we were struggling to get kids out yeah. and we were struggling to be successful. So, um, yeah, it's been good to us. It's been That's good for us. the perfect time for it. Uh, yep. Folks, uh, you're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey, Kevin Green. We're going to talk a little bit more about the changes in the Cahokia Conference coming up as well as the other teams in the, uh, in the conference and how that's looking. Also, some of the changes at the field that you can uh, look forward to this year. I forgot to ask you about special teams. We got to get a new kicker <laughs> back right after this. Stick around. Having car trouble, need a tow, or just some routine maintenance? Butcher Automotive in Louisville has you covered. Locally owned and operated, Butcher Automotive offers complete vehicle repair services along with tire sales and wheel alignment. They're your local hand-cooked tire and interstate battery dealer. Butcher Automotive offers free local pickup and delivery so your car can be repaired while you're at work or at home. Butcher strives to treat everyone's vehicle as their own. At Butcher Automotive, they don't want you to give them your business. They want to earn it. Does your home show signs of foundation problems? Call the experts at Woods Basement Systems. Our power brace system can fix the problem permanently and help protect the value of your home. Call Woods Basement Systems today. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Mold, rank air, pests, all getting closer to inside your home. With a dirt crawl space, there's no telling what's below you. A sealed crawl space locks the nasty stuff out, plus can lower your utility bills. Woods, the all things basementy experts. Residents of the Clay County and surrounding area have relied on Clay County State Bank for sound professional service for over 100 years. With convenient lobby and drive-up hours, we are ready to serve you Monday through Saturday. We appreciate all who bank with us and we look forward to the opportunity of working with anyone who is looking for a community bank to help with their financial needs. Give us a call at 665-3314, visit us online, or stop by and see us on the square in Louisville to experience our friendly personal service. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. 
I thought I'd lost my business in that fire. But my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. North Wayne Insurance Agency in Flora is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Hey, welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. The guest is Kevin Green, high school football coach for the Wildcats. Your season begins... August 27th. August 27th. Yep. Yeah, there's last season. There's this season. As uh, you got Centralia coming in on uh, August 27th. That'll be... that's it's, you're, you're, You guys uh, run that like the Daytona 500, don't you? You put the biggest game at the first of the year. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, you know, it's a it's a tough one to to open up with. That's for sure. I mean, it's uh, you know, the game is uh, the, the, the it's the Shrine game, so a portion of the gate receipts go to the Shriners Hospital yeah. in St. Louis, which is a great cause, and and there's a lot of really good things that go around that situation, um, and it's you know it embodies what high school sports, I think, should be, which is great. You know, local geographic, you know, cross cross county rivals playing each other for a great cause, and yeah. you know, uh, obviously, you know, I I don't know in a football season, I don't know that there's ever a good time to have a game like that, just because it it does create so much hoopla. Um, you know, it's hard at times to come back after that game yeah. uh, for a week or two, but um, our kids have done a pretty good job the last few years of of. You know, kind of compartmentalizing that and and being able to come back the next week. My first several years at Salem, it seemed like, you know, if we lost that game, the season was over, and you know, which is so not the case. But yeah. there's a lot that goes into it, and I and I'm I'm excited for our kids to be able to continue to play it. Plus, you missed them last year. We missed them last year. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, it's been two years since we've had one, and uh, the last one in 2019. You know, we didn't quite get the win but it was a great game it was, it was a tight it was a great game and, and both teams played really hard and uh you know hopefully we're able to to do that again this year and come out on the right side of the score so uh, it'll be august 29th and and it starts at 7th august 27th pardon me starting at uh, 7 30 mm -hmm. why does yep. it start a half an hour later than the rest of the game i think just to make sure that everybody can get there it's usually pretty heavily attended that so probably you know, also i think just early in the season and uh get people through the gates and and that kind of thing it's actually um, i will appreciate it on uh, august 27th being okay. up in the booth Right. The sun will be farther down. Yes. It'll be behind the trees. Yes, exactly right, and that's an issue. You yeah, know, that early in the season, that's an issue. Well, so you can't. I mean, that's the it's thing. hard to see. It's yeah. it's terrifically hard to see. Yeah. That's that's exactly okay. So uh, that so it'll be at seven thirty, and I will. I, I know that we're planning on doing that game on uh, on Wabash Catch TV. So do pay attention awesome. to that. Also, though, folks will uh, find like uh, new. There's a new lights going on. There's a new light right there. Yeah. Yeah, we had those, uh, the old poles were inside the track for, well, all the years I've been there, and they've been there for decades. Uh, there they are, inside yeah. the track they're, poles. Yeah. So they're getting there in the process right now of getting those removed, and um, uh, they've resurfaced our track, and uh, we got new lighting coming in, a new sound system will be provided with the lighting, and uh, um, so yeah, it's exciting, uh, exciting stuff, and uh, excited when you know your school board and your administration gets behind keeping their facilities uh, up with the other teams in our conference and area. It's a, uh, it's a real commitment from them. I think the, that's probably what folks don't realize how good some of the facilities are For in sure. the Cahokia Conference. Yeah, there, there, there's some really good ones. Breeze Central has done some real upgrades to their facility in the last few years, new bleachers and lights, and yeah. uh, Columbia and Freeburg's facilities are just top notch. Yeah. Uh, kids really enjoy going and playing. In there um so yeah i mean it's uh it, it is it's um you don't want to put it in the same category as what colleges are in right now with the the rat race to keep their facilities up but let's be honest i mean kids are on social media they see what other high schools have and what they're able to provide for their students and our kids see that and um there yeah, are, there's there's some nice upgrades going on and in there our are field. players who do look at that and, absolutely and, and think about moving somewhere yeah, there is there is unfortunately there, there is That's, that level uh, and if you're that level of player you're probably a decent player Probably. Probably yeah, so. Probably so. Let's take a look at the schedule. Uh, there's the rest of it. Uh, Mar Alton Marquette coming in this year. Um, and 
the listed as a non-conference game. They are they're still non-conference. Or have yeah, they? they are. Yeah, they're not they're a non-conference game okay. for us. So, so well, East Alton Wood River is basically the first conference game. Yes, yes. And after you traveled, how'd you pick up Harrisburg this year? How'd that come? You know, it just was one of those things. We had a week three opening, and um, they I had one as well. It's just a one year deal. Yeah. Um, so we we were glad to get them. I know we we had played Harrisburg several years ago, um, way before I got to Salem, but. Um, but no, they've got an. I know they've got a new head coach down there, and um, you know, there's some there's some tradition in that school and in that program. So the first big conference change. You played East Alton Wood River in the spring, but mm-hmm. you didn't play Roxana. Roxana, no. a new member of the uh, of this division. What is the, the? Have they named this division or just large? I think it's just the large division. Okay. I don't know what. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be. So Wouldn't be a bad have, idea to name it, used I guess. You have but, in Missis- yes. Mississippi. Yes. Well, we and I don't know what, yeah, I'm not sure what the... Oh, this one, Little Wabash. There, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, yeah. Sounds good to me. We'll take it. We'll take it. What do you know about the Shells? Uh, very little. I know they come from uh, a league that had, uh, what, Greenville in it and um, Hillsboro and Carlinville, I believe. There's some good football in that league. So oh, they're in the South Central? They were, yes. They were in yeah. the South Central? So that I think, is uh, really good football. Yeah, there's some good football there. So I think... Vandalian you know, Stone, they're, they're going to Fit, they're going to fit into our league well. You know, they're going to be a competitive team, I'm sure, right away. And, and uh, you know, Wood River is, has uh, has they've had some ups and downs, but they're going to, I'm sure, they're going to fit right into our league uh, very quickly as well. Folks have kind of gotten the hang of playing against uh, Breeze Central, Columbia, and Freeburg. Yeah, they? they've been the they've been the staples there. It yeah. seems like, and we were playing Freeburg non conference since my first year in 2011. Yeah, uh, at Salem, so we've got a pretty good um, we've got a pretty good rivalry with Freeburg, and then you know we've obviously developed one with uh, with uh, Breeze Central. As well, Charleston uh, tied on at the end. This uh, you've played them a couple of times now, right? Yeah, we played them back in 2019, and then we had played them every year while we were in the Apollo. Yeah, um, so. Uh, it's nice to be able to renew those old conference rivalries in a non-conference fashion, and um, you know they, they're they're going to be a very competitive team this year too. They've got uh, Coach Payne's got them heading in the right direction. So they've been uh, struggling, but it's good to hear they're doing better. Yeah, yeah, they're they're in the they're they're on the upward swing. I think. Were you surprised a little bit, Coach, about the? Uh about the uh, the Cahokia turning into three leagues like that, like it ended up, or had you heard some of that? Whenever that hit, I was a little bit surprised that they basically made invitations, added four teams, yeah. and went to eighteen. That's a hard question to answer. I mean, I, I think you know we were fortunate to find the Cahokia when we did. Yeah. Um, you know, our kids, we were, we were struggling to be competitive consistently in the Apollo. And from a travel standpoint, it was geographically heading the, the wrong direction for us. That's right. Um, well, it was, they, were, they were building farther to the north. Exactly. Uh, we've enjoyed playing. We enjoyed playing Westland and, you know, uh, Carlisle and Redbud. Um, sad to see them leave our schedule, especially when you have Westland and Carlisle, who are two pretty local teams, you know, local rivals. But... Um, you know, we're, 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 we're satisfied with where we're at, I think. And, you know, geographically, it still fits us. We're in a tough spot geographically. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... For, for your size of school. It is, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if you talk about saying, well, the little Illini, there's some pretty hefty travel there. That'd be a long one. And, you know, I think, you know, there's some hefty travel now with Roxana and East Alton being brought in there in exchange for Westland and Carlisle. Yeah. But, um, but no, I think from a competitive standpoint, it's the best fit for our kids. And like I said, we were fortunate to find it when we did. And, um, you know, hopefully there's not a lot more movement, although I'm, I'm sure there probably will be in this day and age. But I think... We're, we're pretty comfortable with where it's at right now. It, I can it, speak from a football standpoint. It all seemingly came about whenever the, the districts yeah. flamed out. Yes, for sure. And and you had the, the smaller schools in our league that, that – I think we're frustrated with that. I can understand why. Yeah, um, well, it's Carla, not a lot. It's Carla not a, went to an eight-man team. They did, and they're back, uh, back eleven man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, you know, Redbud, Westland, and, and Carlisle wanting to move isn't much different of a conversation than Salem wanting to move from the Apollo to the Cahokia. Put their kids right. in a best situation they can. It's no different than Mattoon wanting to get out of the Big Twelve to move into the Apollos right. a long time ago, looking out for their kids. Yeah. You know, Taylorville's in the same situation. You know, Central State 8 to the Apollo. And you know, to the Apollo, it's it's no different. And that's the thing. Enrollments change over time. They do. And, 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 they and do. you don't want to be the – the, uh, the you want to give your kids an advantage. They don't want to be the small school playing the team that's, that's right. that much larger. Right, yeah, right. That, that makes – so who's going to be good? Who's going to win it? 
you know, I think in, in this Here's year... That's coast answer. Here's right, a coach answer. Right. This is a loaded question. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would like to think, honestly, that it's going to be a, a league that uh, is is going to come down to the last couple weeks. I mean, I think there's several teams that could be in the conversation there. Um, Columbia has, has you know, been very solid the last few years. I think they're going to be, you know, maybe in a little bit of a rebuild mode. Um, but Bree Central is going to be solid again. Freeburg's going to be solid. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, we're going to be competitive enough to be in the mix. Uh, at the end, so that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask that for. Exactly chance. right. Exactly right. Be hey, in the hunt, Kev. Thank you so much for being here, Coach. Uh, always a pleasure. I, I always appreciate, appreciate you coming me. in. Yeah, and, appreciate you having me. And best of luck to you this season. I'll see you on the, to, on the road. Okay? Yeah, look forward to see you at Jim Fink's Field. I, I can't wait. There you go, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Big talk. We'll see y'all next time. Have a great day.